Hello and welcome to Do the Right Thing, your weekly writing prompt podcast. I'm Alexandra. And I'm Jarvis. Jarvis and I uh, were aspiring writers with the same problem that so many others do. We never actually took the time to sit down and write. Exactly. So to help us actually get into the habit of writing more often, we are issuing a challenge. Each week we sit down and write a complete short story using three or four randomly generated words. Then we come on the podcast, we read a story, uh, we talk about what we learned in reading it, and then we talk about stories sent in by you wonderful listeners. Exacto mundo. We're simply here to help you do the right thing. A doof, a doof media, media production. production. Um, how are you, Jarvis? You, ju- you just started school. Was this, was this your big first day of school? Yes, yeah, so this is my big first day of school. It started off great. I woke up late, only had an hour to get ready. I ran to the bus, hopped, hopped on that. Uh, and then I went to all of my classes. It was great being on campus. Again, was very nervous, um, especially since a lot of people don't like to wear masks. Um, mm-hmm. But it's okay. I had mine on. Make sure to wash my hands at, at every twist and in turn. And it's looking like it's going to be not a busy semester, but I will be reading anything and everything so that's well, so that's, that's really fun. good yeah i mean I that's that's like my main goal campus. here yeah yeah um now i i'm in new york right now um and <clears throat> you know there's some amenities like there's there's food everywhere i can walk places yeah um which is cool but the people are not as good looking that's a, that's a bigger downside oh than you'd really think. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Although I did just, I went to the Lower East Side in East Village uh, yesterday, and actually that's where all of the the queer young people are. The young the queer hotties. people, the alternative, yeah, the hotties. <laughs> no, the people with with the with the round glasses and the dark clothing, which is exactly Ooh. my demographic. So, yeah. um, I guess you'll be uh, seeing me there more often. I guess. Yeah. Hey, maybe maybe you should just uh, move a uh, move there there be well, one of yeah, the many. Um, it, the problem is it's Manhattan, Manhattan, so oh, it's like, problem. yeah, it's it's 2000 for a studio uh, or more, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> My idea is that sometime in the next two years, hopefully I can move there before I get old, you know? That's, yeah. that's the issue. Um, I mean, what? I think I have about like five, six years before uh, I'm too old to really fit into that crowd, so well, I, I got I a mean, little bit of time. I mean, those people now are going to also age up with you, so... But they'll, they won't stay... I mean, maybe they would. I don't know. I don't know how fast neighborhoods change. True. They'll, they'll just be old, hip, and queer. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Like me. Like you. (laughs) In 30 years. Um, but yeah, that's what's been going on, um, and... I'm a little frustrated because I keep trying to schedule, you know, apartment visits, but 90% of the um, ads that I message and even get a response from are, I don't know, some kind of scam or something that always has some excuse for why we can't see the apartment, which is really frustrating um, because they seem really real. And then the ones that actually do get back to me and are about to schedule a thing just take forever. So Mm, I have a guy that I called, I emailed him. He immediately emailed me back saying to call him. So I called him and then I was like, Hey, can we set up a thing? And he's like, yeah, we can, we can do that. Uh, We can do that right away. I was like, cool. And he never, never got back to me. That was yesterday. (laughs) And I emailed him this morning and still nothing. So I don't know what's up with that, Bob, but (laughs) I hope he, he, I, I want I just want room to yeah. sleep in. I get it, I but, get it, and and I guess that's just a part of the grind at, at, at least right uh, right now with this kind of housing market. Um, it's, yeah, it's especially it's especially bad right now. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's that's my struggle. I do have a job though, so that's cool. That's good, making money. You know what? Mm-hmm. And 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 as long as you are making money, you have options. <laughs> exactly uh and the job is basically just like write wikipedia articles for rich people more that's or less. great <laughs> uh so it works out it's it's fine I, i've done this before i'm writing nonfiction. so oh, okay yeah, yeah, yeah what was that old job that you had which I, one mm. oh the content writing the insurance thing yes that yes it's better than that okay so 
Yeah, good. Well, at least you have ex- experience with them. I mean, because I know you were making serious bank doing that. So <laughs> serious bank with the uh, yes, twelve dollars an hour. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. Um, I mean, for for Texas college level, it kind of is. But mm-hmm. oh yeah, stuff is still like eight fifty, and I've gone to like every shop and store in like a uh, Denton, uh, asking, "Do you have any job? Uh, 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 do you have like any jobs? You know, like someone from the nineteen fifties." Mm-hmm. Um, and they would always hand me like the exact same sheet, and uh, they would say, "All right, here it is. Uh, by the way, we don't have any openings, but fill it out anyway." Um, so yeah. I love that for you. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. But uh, I would probably only be able to like get paid a maximum of like nine fifty. Uh, but then again, you know we have a we have Texas costs here, and we're not paying sixty dollars right. for a stack of for pancakes. pancakes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, no, for sure. You, you, something I am upset about over here is that I applied with and I interviewed at a boba place before mm-hmm. I got this other job. And it was a really good interview. And then I went to a cafe place and I was like, oh, no, I have to take this job because they do pay more. I'm going to feel so bad having to say no to the Boba Place people because they were really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and they seemed really cool. And like it seemed like a like a fast job, not that bad. And then I got a text yesterday saying, oh, we went with someone else. I was like, what? Whoa. You had, oh, no. We had a rapport. You Aww. also said that you needed like so many people. What? Okay, I, I I'm offended a bit. So they somehow so. got totally filled filled up within the week I that you've guess. been there. Okay, I don't know. It's weird. Um, I mean, couldn't they could just tire me and then just say, "Sorry, we don't have full time hours." So like, you know, FYI. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, at, at least they gave you the decency of contacting you back. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Rather than me telling them. Uh, hey, I found somewhere else, and they're like, "Ha, never mind. I didn't huh. even want you to be hired. <laughs> we, we never wanted you here." <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so that's that's what's going on, on my end. Okay, good. Look, we we have like struggles, except you're doing far better than I. Am. <laughs> I mean, I I graduated. That's it. Oh, wow, uh, my wow. Uh, my degree is supposed to be in the mail. So I'm excited to see it. Yeah, and then um, look at it. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll have my my whole. I had to change it. My name on there was wrong up until like several days before mm. the mailing day. I changed it right in time. I think. Okay, good. So you have your uh, full name on there. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So, anyway, um, all right. Do you want to? You want to do a podcast? Um, you see, uh, I kind of do, um, but. I'm really thirsty, so I'm just going to drink this water really quick. Okay. Um, one thing that is good about New York is that the water is actually like clean and stuff. Okay. okay. What? All right. Can I can I say something? Can I say something a little controversial? If you're going to talk bad about Texas, I can't have that here. I mean, okay, it's water is not that great, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's not, drinkable. Yeah. But that's not my point. And in, in fact, this actually applies to Texas as well. This is not a location based thing. But okay. Okay. All right, so this is a little controversial. So stay with me here, all okay. right? And no one, no, no one go canceling me prematurely. But is it just me, or is shower water better than sink water? <laughs> what? Are you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are you a literal maniac? <laughs> I'm. <laughs> shower. I'm pretty sure shower it's water. actually the same water. It probably but... is, but like shower water tastes like blood and pennies. <laughs> No, it doesn't. Not at all. It tastes super refreshing, actually. What? In my mouth. I just turn my mouth skyward. <laughs> like a, like Let a, it right in. Like the concept, you know when you're a kid and you see on TV people like, when they're, when they, like in a movie or show or whatever, mm-hmm. where uh, they're in a desert and they need water. And then a miracle happens, and then it starts raining, and they open look up their and mouth they open up, their yeah. eyes. That's, mouth, that's, mouth that's open, what you do? Their eyes. <laughs> Yeah, no, do you, and then you remember doing that as a kid, and you were like, wow, this is actually really lame. I'm barely drinking anything at all, actually. <laughs> um, and all it was super missing. disappointing. Yeah, but, that, um, but that's what you do in the shower. That's what I do in the shower, and it's exactly what it was supposed to be. Hmm. Okay, well, y- y- you know what? I respect your take. I'm going to have to politely disagree. 
Um, All right. Well, next time you come to New York, yeah, turn your mouth no, skyward. Yeah, maybe it's open wide. Maybe it's the like um, the like a uh, New York water. Um, it could be. But I, but I will say that uh, kitchen sink water is the best water in in the house. Mm-mm. I'm sorry, I I disagree. What? Um, just. Well, like, it, I want that to be true, and it is true right here. Actually, it's it's not bad. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. In Texas, I always get like a like a scratchy throat with the the tap. Um, from yeah. the sink. Like, I, I mean, I drink from it constantly because I'm not about to go get a cup. Just yeah, to, exactly. To sit, but, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know what? That's probably just Texas water. Um, but you know what? Speaking of Texas water. Um, we have a wonderful story that we are about to read here. Well, first, uh, what were the words this week? Oh, well, that's even better. The words this week were depart, deprive, abolish, and pop. And pop? Mm-hmm. Was that? Oh, yeah. Now I remember. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... I, that totally... <laughs> slipped the brain. Not... I was like, did, did someone change the word? I don't remember that <laughs> being canonical. Anyway, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. we had a, a couple of really good stories. Um, and I'm excited to read this one by Commander Suit. Definitely. And also to uh, preface this once again, the month of August is the nonfiction month. So please, if you have the time and the will, send in your wonderful nonfiction stories and wow us with your writing prowess. That was good. I mm. like that one. <laughs> Yep, yeah. Um, I think we have about one one week uh, left for this prompt. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, get your nonfiction stories in before you switch it to something else. Hey, what are we? What are we gonna switch until after? I have no idea. I have God. nothing planned. I don't know either. I'm gonna have to think about that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, maybe. Maybe like water, fish. Water. Aquatic. Yeah. Water. Let's yeah. do one on tap water. <laughs> yeah. Um, Send in your best tap water story. all right let's get going um what's the name of the story yeah so the name of this story is five features of the place where i live and it is by provocative title comato soup Mm -hmm. five features of the place where i live by comato soup one the duct taped closet the guest room has a bed a desk, and an ethernet cord sneaking some 50 feet through the house to connect it directly into the modem. It's all I would want as a guest, and that's all in the room. These are the necessities. Anything less would be deprivation. There's a closet, too, but the door is sealed on all four sides with heavy duct tape. There's been a weird smell coming from it since the day we moved in, and it seemed prudent to concoct a temporary solution given the situation. The situation is simple. My brother and I get to rent the old decrepit house on the cheap, and in return, we move out in a year's time with little fuss. In a state with ample resident and squatter's rights, this quality of leaving without a fuss is apparently coveted. One family friend realtor recommendation later, and here I am, where I have been for the better part of a year with duct-taped closets and one bathroom we don't use because of tiles that sag inward from water damage. The reason we don't try to fix anything is the other part of the situation. When the time comes, we will leave, and then this house and the neighboring house will be torn down to erect a low-income housing development. That is what they tell us but a part of me doubts that it will be anything other than yet another one of those luxury housing apartments that are sprouting up in the surrounding streets. Already there are about four, penning us in on all sides. 2. The two bathrooms. The first bathroom is connected to the living room, which is a sensible place for a bathroom to be. Its most notable feature is a window that seems perfectly placed to frame a person's face for the neighbors as one goes about doing bathroom business. Not that we have neighbors on that side of the house anymore. That house is the other property that has to be demolished for the sake of construction, and the family that lived there has departed some months ago. The second bathroom is directly connected to the kitchen, as in, You walk into the kitchen, with a sink opposite the stove and fridge, 
And if you turn left, there it is. An inexplicable, fully functioning bathroom. This is the only way into the bathroom, and it seems someone in the past decided that a bathroom directly to the, tied to the kitchen was the right and proper place for a bathroom to be. This is the bathroom that the shower curtains and working head have been moved to. To cleanse yourself in this house is to consider future meals. Shower cooking is often considered as a particularly extreme kind of multitasking. It is never executed, however because of the clarion warning in the form of the next notable feature. 3. The Giant Front Lot The address of the residence is technically my address plus one half. This is because there used to be two residences at this address. It's just that before I ever moved in here, one of them burned down. This is why the address possesses that vestigial half and it is also why there is a gigantic front yard in the rough intimation of a house. The front lot is entirely bereft of features except for a single persimmon tree, which at one point served as a border between the two houses. During the summer, the tree is heavy with leaves and fruit, blocking the lights of the house until it is practically invisible at night. This demands a longer walk, in the event of any late-night food deliveries. 4. The Haircut Back Area COVID has spurred me into learning to cut my own hair to avoid an infection vector. Trips to haircutting places have been abolished, and in its place is a new destination, a narrow alley between the back of the house and a neighbor's wall. This space was once meant for storage and houses a non-functional washer and dryer unit. The hair that is used for haircutting is usually left there, and a couple of rain and drying cycles have worn a dried amoeba tattoo into the plastic seat. What we fail to sweep tends to get swished around, which means the corners of this area are vaguely horrific, with small bits of human hair among the dust and dirt. 5. The AC Air Gap The living room is split in two about the size of two doorways, except with no door. The AC is old and pops with strain, unable to adequately cool the whole dual living room and bedroom, so an air buffer was constructed. Half of the buffer is composed with stacks of boxes forming a wall, with the other half made with heavy-duty blinds from Costco. They hang from nails just above the doorframe, functioning akin to a giant doggy flap. Thus is an enclosed, smaller airspace constructed. It is the only thing that makes the temperature tolerable. All right, all right. So, really great story. I um, love how much this story really just allows it to sit in this imagery, you know? And also showing us exactly how these places are are being used um, while still sort of cluing us in on, you know, this isn't the best place possible, but the character of the story and their roommates seem to really make it feel like home. And I, and I really enjoyed that, that feeling uh, throughout. So, I mean, overall, really great job. Uh, I think, you know, of course, these, these, the shining star of the story is that imagery that I said previously. Yeah. Um, I think this is definitely a good example of what someone can do with nonfiction, just mm-hmm. describing a location and, um, pulling so much character from it. Um, <laughs> I like the small bits, like uh, contemplating or cleansing oneself is to contemplate future meals. Um, you know, that sort of tongue in cheek, sort of philosophical uh, aspect, nature thing. Mm-hmm. It, it's fun. Um, I think we learn a lot about the space. One thing that I thought was interesting is that, um, you know, when I started reading it, I was not sure if this was nonfiction or not, because the beginning is so, like, 
blatantly foreshadowing, right? Mm-hmm. Like the whatever is behind the door that's been sealed off with duct tape. Uh, I would not assume is is something fine. <laughs> um, I, I mean, apparently it is, unless if Kameda Soup is uh, trying to signal to the world that they've hit a dead body there, or mm. that there was one when they arrived. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes on further, and there's these other sort of creepy elements, uh, specifically the, the human haircutting alley. <laughs> yes. Which is... Um, a little worrying, a little uh, gross. I'm just picturing like a chair facing a brick wall, yeah. like away <laughs> from it, with as hair just, everywhere, like, cut hair, mm-hmm. and it's like very clearly human hair. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Come to soup. Uh, the, I, it's the, it's a cre- creepy scenario that you're living in. Yeah, very much. But yeah, I mean, overall, I I, I really did like this store. I think the one thing that I feel could uh, take this story to the next level is really focusing down on one moment, you know, because this story is really just sort of glossing over how how this place looks, how they used it, what it what it feels like for, for you to to be there, which is great. But I think if th- all of this great imagery was grounded within one moment, that can really give us the emotional weight of this story that would really just sort of propel this, this story to that next level, you know? So maybe starting with the, uh, well, I mean, one of my favorite, favorite parts is of course, this very strange hair cutting, uh, alley, right? So maybe starting there while, while one person is getting their, um, a haircut and then we see what, what they see. And then that's when we go into describing these, these other places. I think that will work really well to ground this, this story a bit more. I would, uh, push back that it's like necessary. Um, but I can see how that would, uh, be an interesting thing or, or have a, the scene where the keys get handed over and then you sort of see what the place looks like. Yeah. Um, or, or, um, look through at all these terrible things and says, we'll take it. Right. (laughs) Um, yeah, it's interesting. Um, Mm -hmm. but I think it also works like, like this, especially when it's, uh, divided into these five parts. Yeah. I quite like that sort of structure. Um, but, uh, or having, um, like a, a central theme that we're working towards something like, um, I mean, there's there's traditional ones like yes, it's not the greatest place, but it's home. But I don't even know if that would be what Commander Super really feels about this place. It's just maybe this is a temporary uh thing, and that's entirely how they feel about it. Or maybe there's a little bit more about like this very strange place is going to get torn down and destroyed, and this is sort of documenting it before uh that final destruction, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Or, or, you know, something like, like that. I mean, I think that the biggest thing is that all of this, all, all of the greatness that, that the story is really doing could be placed, um, within, you know, as I said, a more ground, a more grounding scenario. But as is, I do really like the, uh, form choice of sort of listing out these, uh, different things, um, uh, about this, uh, this place. And I like how, I got a tinge of comedy in it, you know, just sort of, mm-hmm. um, in, you know, certain places on how you are de- describing this sort of like, uh, desolate S place, but with love be behind it. So I, so I like really, so I really like that. I really love this, this voice that you are using, just, you know, grounding that and all of the greatness that, that the story is doing. In a scene, you know, in a present moment that the uh, that the reader can really grab a uh, grab onto and have that moment inform what else they will, they'll be reading throughout this this story. I'm gonna I'm gonna still push back. I don't. Okay, um, okay, that's fine. I think it's okay as it as it is with uh like it is mostly like setting and and um characterizing this place itself. So I don't know if it necessarily like you need. Uh, a, a specific scene. In fact, like, I don't know. I feel like part of what this is about is the sort of grand survey, yeah. Rather than any specific moment. Okay. Um, not that like it would be like a a, a bad thing, but I feel like maybe something different is is going on here than something that would call for a specific scene with specific characters. Like, I feel like if it was 
generalize with like the people who live here do this or whatever i think that would fit it more yeah, than okay, I see. like a named character speaking something specifically but that that is just the sense i'm getting from this piece okay yeah i i i get that i mean either way of course really really great great piece and i think mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. if you were to work on this some more you can really sort of bring the character of this this house fully um alive because i like as i was reading i I felt it i I felt like oh i've I've been here before i've seen this this sort of alley I've, i've walked into this kind of home so you're doing a really great job of giving us things that we can work off of to sort of delve deeper to whatever message might 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 be here just you know for me personally making that message stronger can inherently upgrade this this story yeah the 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 one thing that would would be for me is to uh, drill down into um yeah a, a specific message or whatever else um but it works for me right now. Yeah, it does. It does. Well, all right. I think it's high time to move on into our listener submitted story section. So, Defo. Uh, we want to say thank you to everyone who did submit a story. Thank you so much to uh, Comedo Soup, Blarry345, and, and Fine By Me. Thank you so much for leaving your story. And yeah. the first one we, we will be talking about is by Blarry345 with Books Save Lives. So I think this is cool. I say sort of background, I think, and I, I don't know if this is for certain, but mm-hmm. I think it might be connected to a prior story, the one with the, um, like, uh, the monster in, in the woods that, like, sapped the energy from everyone. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going off of uh, this other thing, uh, I think it was, like, two weeks ago with um, that undead, or not undead, like, desiccated deer bear thing. Um, so I think it's sort of set in the same universe, which is, it was fun just to read that and making that connection live without having a, like a specific link telling me. Um, mm-hmm. But um, it's structured basically as um, an entry for a kind of fantastical monster, a winter chimera, um, and uh, divided into uh, a couple different sections that are just a paragraph about um, like the appearance, the behavior, strengths, weaknesses, and what the threat is. Um, and it says it's all from Bruston's Bestiary of Magical Creatures, the seventh edition. Always fun. Mm-hmm. Um, it basically describing this um, melding of a prey and predator animal in a cold space that basically seeks out warmth and hungry creatures and, and saps all the warmth from them. And um, how you need to be aware of them if you go into the, their um, territories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, overall, I really enjoy just the form of this story. I mean, I love how it is fiction, but it is written in a very non-fiction way. It's, it's written, you know, like a uh, bestiary entry, right? Uh, and I and I really and uh, and I really love that. I I love how it's definitely just going really in 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 depth of like what this creature looks like, what it does, why. Um, strengths, how, how, how you can possibly beat it, but also, you know, serving as, you know, caution when you do come uh, around this uh, creature. So, I mean, overall, yeah, I think it's a really strong uh, entry and I can definitely see bits like, like this serving very well in a, uh, a larger narrative. Um, but yeah, overall, really, really great job. And I, and I loved reading this one. Yeah, uh, so stuff like this is always really fun to, to do, especially with world building mm-hmm. and, and it being like structured like this, I think is really cool. Um, something that I would suggest on a, a future example of, of something like this is put a bit of that author's um, voice in there. Mm-hmm. Like obviously in an academic, you know, nonfiction in real life, that probably wouldn't be a good idea. But when you're writing fiction, um, it's even if you were to like to publish like a like any example of a publishable you know bestiary of magical creatures in real life right where it is fiction but it's you know for fun they often involve um that character voice of the author uh slipping through you know how do they feel about this is it something that it matters that that matters to them have they like encountered these on the adventures Do, do they think it's a myth um what does that how does that carry through right or how do they view about the people that normally encounter them are they stupid are they 
you know, brave? Are they um, gross, uh, like uh, poor people hunting these things or whatever else? So there's some examples of what you can slip in there in the future. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But uh, thank you very much to Blarry345. And up next is by Fine By Me with an untitled story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is um, so this is a author we had last week um, doing another nonfiction piece, talking, uh, sort of having a addressing their brother's boyfriend that passed away a long time ago mm-hmm. from a drunk driver, and you can really tell that they are um, still, uh, you know, processing some feelings of like anger and maybe some some confusion right with how language that they use like um there isn't even a story here just a dumb fucking thing that happened this one time and yeah it's just um sort of sad maybe a little bit angry um remembrance of this person addressing them and i I like this notion that comes up a couple times in the few paragraphs about um how this person might in the afterlife like know things already you know know of some people that already passed right Mm -hmm. and um that final notion at the end of um maybe i'll ask you when i am there too yeah yeah definitely i mean this is a really strong story i mean it uh is perfectly able to present these these emotions i like how it is addressing this uh, this person I like how there's so much hindsight within this this story and it's trying to really grapple with with all of the things that led up to this main e- event. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, I, I just feel that that this story is really honest. You know, it's really it's uh, it's allowing itself to be vulnerable and, and, and that does come across and that is a, a great read. So. I mean, overall, I just really loved it. And it is really short, too, but it's able to get to those emotions so quick and, and to take us on this really short trip, this this journey that this family went through after this uh, this passing and, like, what, what happened and where it sits now. This story does a great job of uh, showing us the entire timeline, but in such a short piece so really really fantastic job it's fine by me mm-hmm. yeah um i thought it was really deep and i um thought it was a really good exploration of these feelings mm-hmm. well all right uh i think it's high time to say thank you to everyone who did submit their story so thank you so much to comato soup Thank you, Blarry345. And thank you, Fine by Me. And we would also like to say thank you to everyone who did leave comments. Leaving comments not only under your own story, but under someone else's story, can not only put all of your own ideas out there for other people to, to, to see, but you're also providing someone else with crucial feedback that can only help them and you become a better writer. So, thank you very much to Comato Soup, Glittering Coast, and Fine by Me. Thank you so much for leaving comments. Yeah, and if you're not feeling up to writing um, your story for a certain week, that's totally okay. Just consider going into the subreddit, reading um, some of the wonderful stories that um, are already there, and leaving a comment or two. Um, that always helps out people a lot. Mm-hmm, definitely, definitely. If you want to be like all of these wonderful writers and submit your story to Do The Right Thing, you can do that by going to reddit at slash r slash do the right thing. All you have to do is sit down for 30 minutes and write a complete short story using three or four randomly generated words. Uh, That's right. You can see the words as soon as they come out by going to our Twitter and following us at RightThingCast. You can turn on the notifications and see the words as soon as they come out. Mm -hmm, Exactly. And if you want to support us and everyone else in Doof Media, you can do that by donating to the Doof Media Patreon. All you have to do is donate $10 or more per month to not only be able to vote on everything upcoming in Doof, but also you'll be able to see exclusive bonus content. Um, We always have so much else going on at at Doof Media. You can go and watch the Doofcast later this week on The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Mm. um, that Narnia movie that came out a bit ago. Uh, Not came out a bit ago. I don't know why I phrase it that Mm -hmm. way. It's a really old movie. (laughs) Um, 
Uh, but I remember really liking it as a kid, so I'm I'm very excited about that one. And then of course, um, we always have a we have a bunch of other podcasts. If you haven't checked out one of the other Wildbo podcasts, you know consider it. You know, pick up Pale uh, and see how you feel about it, and then uh, check out Pale Reflections, which is one of my favorite uh, podcasts and one of the only ones that actually like consistently put number one on my list to 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 keep on top of. Nice, nice. All right, so uh, I think it's high time to get into next week's words. Uh, that's right. What are they? Uh, let what are me, the next words? Let me uh, do a little roll real real quick. All right. So next week's words are diamond, elbow, brain, and angle. I like these. Okay. So diamond, which is a certain kind of precious um, gem mm-hmm. made from compressed carbon. Uh, it is widely held as one of the most valuable in, in, in medding s- settings and such, even though it's actually very, very common. Very. Um, the Koch brothers have that monopoly, and that uh, is where most of it comes from, and it's always used for uh, weddings and rings uh, right now. Um, I think it has some representations of what it means. Um, in general, uh, in a lot of settings, diamond rank or other things are the top, top rank. Tier, yeah. Of, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so those are the ones I have. Also, diamond is very tough, so you have like diamond-tipped uh, drills and other things, of course. Mm-hmm. The next word is elbow. So the bend between what's the upper part and the lower part of the arm called? I don't remember. There's the forearm and the main and the arm. back arm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know what your elbow is. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is. Also, uh, like a turn in like pipes that looks like an elbow is often called an elbow. You can have elbow macaroni. Uh, macaroni. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Elbow grease. And you can elbow someone, which is a verb where you sort of bump someone a little bit with the, their elbows to get their attention or notify them of something. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also elbow through people, which is to, again, push them aside using your elbows. Mm-hmm. Um. I think that's all the elbow words. Yeah. Uh, brain, which is uh, the thingy, the organ that used to, to think, the thinky. Um, <laughs> the, the, there's not, the think muscle. The think muscle, exactly. Um, it is also, someone could be the brains of the operation, mm-hmm. which is uh, in a team, they are the person that is doing the thinking. Um, you can brain someone, which is use a club to hit oh, someone okay. in the head really yeah. hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> What else? Uh, brains are very like messy yeah. and gory when they're outside of the head. Zombies so, eat them. Zombies eat them, and destroying theirs kills them. Mm-hmm. Yes, it does. So, and being brainy is to be smart. <laughs> uh, and last word is angle, which is uh, that's like a how, what's the definition of angle? An angle is uh, it's when two lines meet and it's it's the part where it's not the lines yeah it's the part between the lines it's it's the distance except it's not really distance between how far like how in the direction yes and it's like different you know yeah and it's uh, <laughs> it was a long time since it took geometry y'all <laughs> Thankfully, um, most people know what an angle is. Yeah, most people do know what an angle is. Um, I can't think of any, many other examples besides the mathematical and, and you know, just the, the shape that... You know what an yeah. angle is. <laughs> anyway, oh, 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 okay. My last my last definition yes. is um, it's a meme nowadays. An when angle? When you are calling someone an angel oh, to misspell it and say angle. angle. Yes, that is a It's funny because you misspelled it. I, and I like angel is like a sort of dramatic thing to call someone mm-hmm. and so it undercuts all the uh, drama of calling someone angel by calling them an angle. Mm-hmm. And it ups the funny. It ups the funny, which is the most important part. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> That's uh, the words for this week. Uh, considering that the um, the topic for the month is still nonfiction. Jarvis, what is your three sentence story that you're going to write? Three next sentence week? story. Um, okay. I was going to give my wife a diamond ring, but it fell down the storm drain. It hit the bottom elbow of of the pipe 
at a really weird angle to where I couldn't get it with my hands. So I used my brain, grabbed a hanger, and fished it out over 10 hours. <laughs> there you go. I was wondering where the funny twist was. <laughs> uh, that's good. That was excellent. What a wonderful short story. Thank um, you. I'm very proud of you. You finally got yeah, it. Yeah, finally. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, you get it all the time. Um, what about you? Okay. Uh, well, I... Okay, so... I'm I'm writing a story about a about an ancient uh, clockwork sorceress. Mm-hmm. Uh, she built uh, clockwork robots to take over the world, and um, her her strongest creation. She used all her brains and, and made the best constructed thing. It had diamond elbows, oh. so it could just just wreck anything that it came up with. The, the ultimate weapon, um, and it, it was doing that. It was laying waste to her enemy armies, but. Uh, then it extended its arm at the wrong angle and uh, its arm is just snapped off. Ow. And it was like enchanted to have like pain. So it actually really, it really hurt. And uh, then the bad guys that are actually the good guys, they just, they broke it. And then they broke her. Um, I mean, they killed her. That oh. I don't like. Oh, she was actually a robot. That's what they, that when they, when they broke her, it's because she was a robot and, and the piece and she died. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> that's so sad <laughs> it is sad these, it is these sad. guys are terrorists um so moral of the story is put the diamond everywhere not just the elbows mm-hmm. and by doing that you know what i think that's um doing um doing something pretty that's good. all folks that's all we got <laughs> all right that's the end of the podcast thank you so much thank you um have a good afternoon please and a good morning like, and a good like night and um, subscribe but I want you to have a bad noon. A like bad specifically noon. noon, I want you to have a bad... Hey, what? How long is noon? Is it just like... It, it, yeah is it is it the the amount of time that it takes to go from one minute. uh 12 o'clock to 1201 or is it the amount of time from like 11 to to 1 p.m is it two hours or is it from 12 to 1 i don't know because what, how long is new or is it like from 11 30 to uh, to twelve thirty. What when is new? Well, most places stop serving breakfast at ten thirty eleven, uh-huh. right? And they right. start selling lunch right after that, right? right. But uh-huh. by the time it's one, it's afternoon. So I would say right. that You're noon right. itself, of course, it is within the middle of of the the day. So noon is that one minute when it's just twelve, right? But mm-hmm. the see. time period of noon is Mm -hmm. from when breakfast ends and the afternoon begins okay i see i see yeah and uh thank you Uh, so you learn something new every day that's that's it that's what we got goodbye goodbye